No, th thank you very much, uh, 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 Samuel, and, and special greetings to once more to our High Commissioner, Dr. Monarin, and uh, Ambassador Siokon, and, and all of you from the media. As, as of course, you have been covering this uh, story since uh, this tragic accident has happened. We, we met with uh, the team uh, from as uh, a DECO, as led by Ambassador Siokolo, and also the team uh, from Botswana government, as represented and led by uh, uh, Her Worship, Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Muna uh, and, and ourselves as the Limpopo government, which was comprises of different departments you've seen the members of the south african police services were here from health you have seen the head of a uh, forensic and we also mm -hmm. earlier on had uh, our surgeon uh, that that uh, was was here who is looking after uh, our surviving uh, a, a patient what we can indicate firstly from from uh, the briefing is that uh, the, the, the ambassador will, will take over after I, I give such a, a small uh, just uh, update to say together with the ambassador we have again once more uh, so the, the child, she's doing well, uh, she's in safe hands and, and, and we are uh, uh, comforted uh, by the fact that uh, she's in good health and, and and she's, she's recovering. We are positive that she will recover very well. And as we have indicated earlier on, our head of forensic has already uh, briefed us to say up to so far in our, in our mortuary here, our forensic, we have received 34 body bags. And that doesn't mean 34 bodies, it's 34 body bags of which nine we can confirm that they are identifiable. So up to so far we can say nine, which we are working with the High Commissioner on the process of identification, but they are identifiable. The remaining 25, they will still be subjected to a serious processes. Uh, but bearing in mind that we, we have got a number that we got from Department of Transport from the, the subs of 46. That number of 46 is for the, the passengers that left Botswana according to them. So of which one is there and then nine identifiable. So for now we can talk about 10 who were in that bus. The rest we must subject them to scientific process if we can uh, believe, uh, deal with it in that way. So that is what uh, the other briefings were those, uh, because you should remember that uh, 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 fr from my side, I've been delegated by the, the provincial government to, uh, on behalf of the Premier to receive uh, 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 Excellency the High Commissioner and also Ambassador Siokolo is representing our national government. So there is, there will be a team that will be put into place to work together with the Botswana government so that we make sure that the entire process of identification until repatriation so that the Botswana government can re receive the remains of their loved ones and give them the befitting send off. So, so that's what we can say uh, from a uh, South African side. I will hand over to uh, Excellency, the High Commissioner, so that she can take us also through the briefing. Why don't you sort them out? Want to interfere? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As um, I have been introduced, I'm Sanjay Munakin, 
the Botswana High Commissioner to the Republic of South Africa. I must say that um, my staff and I, the population of the Republic of Botswana, our leaders, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and of course, our President, His Excellency Masisi, we are heartbroken. We have witnessed something that uh, you don't even dream of witnessing. And uh, before I do anything, I would like to thank very, very profusely the Republic of South Africa and its people. I would like to thank the Presidency, Yahare Ramaphosa, especially the Minister, Honorable Minister Nzaveni, who has been de designated to coordinate this painful episode that we are going through. I would also like to thank Minister Pando and his office. They have been completely amazing. They felt our hand when we didn't know whether we were going forward or backward. And of course, I want to thank Honorable MEC Ramatoba. The MEC and his t her team have not spent a night, at least last night, sleeping. They were awake the whole night. And of course, Re, um, the DDG was on the, on the phone the whole night with me. He was actually acting as uh, the conjunct between me and, and, and the MEC. And I must say that uh, I am pleasantly, very pleasantly excited for us to be working so closely with the, the South African government. Um, needless to say, I mean, we are, like I said, we are devastated, but uh, we, are, we, are, we are also um, happy that the South African government is holding our hands so tightly. We've had nothing but cooperation. We have had nothing but help. We, as you have just heard, our little survivor, our little angel, has just come out of a procedure and she is doing very, very well. And the rest will come later. very much. Um, in terms of uh, the, 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 the parents, as you see, they are very, they are a small number. These are parents and leaders of the church. We did go out and we talked to them and we gave them the information that we are legally right now allowed to give them. 
and uh, they appreciated that a lot. Now, in terms of um, the help, I think it is still too early. They came here, they followed. The initial thing and the most important thing is for us now to listen to the experts, to listen to the police, to listen to both doctor, the, the forensics, and we will take it up from there. As of now, I cannot say they will be given such and such help or uh, uh, this kind of help. But what is important is that uh, we are working with the parents even in Botswana, that teams and teams, police, psychologists, and stuff like that. But let's all remember that it is too early. Not all processes have been put in place, but I, I can assure you that uh, we are very much in touch. Have we been able to identify the relatives of all the people who perished? In other words, do we also know all the names of the people who were in the bus as well? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and do we know if in some instances there would be a family that perhaps lost more than one uh, family member in the, this uh, incident? We just had a meeting, and in the meeting, there were two representatives from the ZCC, from the church, who sat through the whole meeting, who have appreciated everything that has been done, who have appreciated what processes are still to be done. They are members of the church. And as members of the church, I mean, 48 people and maybe some didn't come. And um, as we are aware, this is a close-knit little small community. They will be identified, those who are identified, the nine for now. The church members who are here know them by, by sight. And uh, this is what we are looking for. Or we are looking forward to the vis visual identification, then which will be followed by all the other processes that the MC, MEC talked about, DNAs, postmortems, that will now be uh, the doctor's terrain. As of now, only the church knows the names of the people who are in the bus. We don't know, but we are. This is work in progress. We at the embassy will soon know who they are. We are working in collaboration with the South African police, with the Botswana police, and with the MEC's office. And we are. We have a program, if you like, that ultimately will facilitate, if possible, the identification of everybody. Yeah, I think that's all you wanted. I just wanted to check while we are still investigations are still ongoing. Do we know perhaps at the stage where the bus left in the driver, the area that it departed from, in the USA, which was what I was using? And the bus company in itself, do you know who they are? What the bus has been in the to travel? <laughs> I can't, I can't say anything about the, uh, whether the bus was serviceable or not. I think um, that's for another, for another authority. Um, they, 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 left, uh, they left from Haburuni. And in the bus, there were baruti, or pastors, who knew the route, the route the bus driver took. And it appears they missed a, a turn, hence they ended on this, um, on, 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 on this thing. But remember that uh, investigations are going on. I cannot definitively say 
that this is what happened. We have to wait for the conclusion of, um, of investigations. And as I say, I do appreciate that uh, you, are also, you also want the public to know. We are, I'm also anxious for especially the Botswana public to know what exactly happened. But uh, investigations are fresh, they are ongoing. What I can tell you is that after the meeting that we had, I am very convinced that this investigation is in good hands across the board. And one thing I should, um, I should highlight, there is commitment from the South African government that this case is being given priority, priority in the sense of, uh, of the numbers. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we can feel it. I mean, like I, I, when I started, I told you about uh, how we are being treated, how we are being, our hands are being held. And uh, in terms of uh, the investigations, that was my, the, the real crunch for me as a, as a former judge. And I can tell you that I am more than convinced that we are in good hands. And uh, the message that is going back home is that much as we are mourning, we, we, are, we have excellent, excellent partners. Yeah. We have another question from and a follow-up question from ENC. After the Thank you. Maybe I should I should start, uh, <laughs> Commissioner. Just just to indicate yes. that um, the, the 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 police will will make that call of saying we have searched is enough. We we can't search anymore. Mm -hmm. For now, I can confirm that the whole team is still on the scene, and we are still hopeful that uh, more remains can be. Uh, recovered, uh, uh, as as I've indicated earlier on. So so that's why 
uh, I, I would even say to, to those who were asking other questions, say if the first step is for us to, to, to recover all the remains, and once we are done with the recovering of remains, then those other processes of identification, who goes where, can start. But you can't even start without even knowing uh, if we are in it. Because it's very critical, we all know that for families to find closure, the families must be able to have that particular day where they say, here are the remains of our loved ones, we've been able to bury them. And that is also part of healing. There's no way the fa families will easily go through this and heal until they are able to find the remains of their loved ones. So, so that is why this is quite important. And we can't tell you when are we going to, 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 to stop search. Yesterday, immediately after the accident, we were told we can anticipate 12 hours. 12 hours passed by midnight yesterday. The, it was difficult for the safety of even those who were doing the search, they had to suspend. So, so today they've started, there's no way we can say in the next two hours they'll stop. We are not yet satisfied, but if it starts raining or something happens, they can suspend until that is done. So it's, it's going to be difficult even for the police themselves to can tell you and say we guarantee we will call off uh, this search at this particular time. So, but for now, we are all committed as the multidisciplinary teams towards finding the remains of those who, are, uh, who, who perish in, in that accident. Mm -hmm. Um, the, 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 the child who survived, uh, all I can reassure uh, South Africans and Botswana nationals is that our child is it's in a stable condition. She undergo a, a, a minor procedure this morning, I'll still re repeat, it's a minor procedure uh, as, as part of the injuries that she had sustained and we had to, uh, our surgeons had to take her to theater for that. She's out of theater currently. She's well, she's in the ward, she's doing well, her vitals are normal. We don't have a reason to panic or to be worried, but we must also appreciate that the manner in which this accident has occurred, the way it traumatizes her, uh, if I'm to borrow from psychologists and psychiatrists, uh, tr the, the nature has got its own way that the brain protects you from such psychological trauma by making you switch off and, and not talk about that. So some of you might think, why is she not talking about the accident? It could, it's, it's how it is. Uh, I always say before God creates uh, the wisdom of doctors, he started by making sure the body itself can become its own defense mechanism. So what you should be reassured is that our child is doing very well. Our child is stable. There's no need to panic. And, and there's no need for me to be specific, uh, to say she's injured here mm. and that. It's a child. Uh, and, and you know how sensitive I am when it comes to children. Uh, even, even adults, patients, we always uh, protect them from the media. What you need to report and what you need to know is that the child is stable, the child is doing well. Her pastors were with us from the church to represent her family and they are satisfied and they themselves, you can interview them, they have seen that she's getting the best care that you can ever get anywhere in the country. For you, I can reassure you on that. You can never get the better care than this one, considering the types of injuries she has sustained. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, MEC. Earlier when I was asked which border they used, they used the pass hold border. And uh, as we know, Botswana and South Africa, we have many, many, many borders, and you choose which border could be less, less crowded. So they, that they used that one, and ultimately found themselves where they are. Now, I met, I met uh, Moloko, 
I met the parents. I explained the whole process. And remember that they could not be in this room when we were discussing expertise, when we were discussing the very same things that uh, we feel would have traumatized them even more. And they understood why they could not come into the room. But having said that, one of the two representatives is a very senior member of the Botswana police who understands what we are talking about when the doctor explains the processes, when the police explain the processes. I mean, these are sensitive, very sensitive issues that you don't want to, that you don't want a, a grieving person to hear. At one stage, we will sensitively, or somebody, the doctors here or in Botswana, the police, they will sensitively explain in detail what has been going on. But I think the most important thing for us right now is to assure you that we are in contact with them. They understand that there is a process. They understand that um, none of us, even the doctors and the scientists, can tell them when this process is going to come to an end. And uh, of course, uh, they, they, they know that we are available. The Botswana High Commission is available for them. We'll take it step by step and see where, where it will end. Um, yeah. There was a question about the driver. Oh, the driver. Again, that, that is something for the police, for the investigators. I really have no information on that. But the fact that uh, he was allowed to drive a bus, one would assume that he's qualified. One, I, as to whether this was the first time he came here, we didn't fo make a follow-up with, uh, with the representatives. Thing. And I want to tell you that one of the two um, the gentlemen who are here is intimately involved in this journey in the preparations, in the list. He drew up the list, he made sure that everything was okay. He was coming with them in a different car. And when they got here, then they, because I, I guess they were using different routes, but uh, they, they, we were given assurances, we were given information that has assured me that I can be able to face Botswana. And, 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 and explain. They will explain. And these two men are the people who are going to explain to the families. Like I said, the one gentleman is a very senior police officer. And again, we will be there. We will be communicating. When there is need, we will step forward. But the most important thing is that uh, we should allow the law, we should allow medicine, we should allow investigations to, um, to take place and, and to a logical conclusion. Thank you. Let's take Koketsu uh, for the first time, then it will be you, Katero, and Mulukomlo. That's all. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the um, You spoke about the nine points that are identified. So I just want to find out if there is any and another question to the High Commissioner is that what kind of um, assistance uh, do you need as the Zwan government in South Africa and um, you know, during this time? Thank you. Just to be specific, also my name is Dr. Kukun from SAC. I just wanted to double check, Commissioner, if I um, have correctly said any element in the past. Were all of them family or is it just this? What's the last question? The name of the last question. Oh, okay. All right.
Molokoro again from the ENCA. And since this accident happened uh, yesterday, what's been the role of the church as we are told they have been going to the church? Have you been able to meet with the leaders of the church? Um, what form of assistance, if you can uh, bring us up to speed, are they uh, bringing to the table? And seeing that we are counted about five, if not six, um, family members who were outside, mm -hmm. and we are told uh, those people in the bus were about 46. Mm -hmm. And I do remember you saying that the process to identify all of them mm -hmm. is still underway. But I'm trying to find out whether this uh, 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 family members who were outside this particular hall mm -hmm. are leaving in South Africa or they travel to, to South Africa mm -hmm. from Botswana following this accident. And lastly, is there a process underway, as far as you know now, to perhaps bring over some of the people you might have possibly identified as families or relatives in Botswana who still have to make their way to South Africa? Uh, maybe because some of the questions you are asking, the High Commissioner should come to, to us in terms of the identity education what uh, Muloka is asking. I'll try to answer both uh, your, your two questions. Um, the, the nine bodies that are identifiable, if we can understand what identifiable means, it means if you know the person, you can be able to recognize. That doesn't mean we know the person. So we must separate from us knowing the person or being identifiable. So, so the 34 body bags we receive, nine are identifiable. And with the nine, maybe just to start the process, with the nine, and, and the High Commissioner has indicated that the presence of the two Varutis who are here, who are coming from the side, who were in, some of them were very close to the process who was organizing, who even in the, has got the list as to who was in the bus, who exchanged with who in the bus, so meaning that this list might be amended and all that. Mm. That's why we don't want to go to the public and say all these things to skip, to publish the list when even they themselves, Baruti, are still saying there was one who was in the Kumbi who exchanged with this one. Maybe you're pushing us to come with those details, which we can't do in front of the family and you as media. We, we are working together with the church. It has addressed you to say, what is happening with our church? We are working closely with the church. That's why the church released senior pastors. The one who was with us is one of the senior pastors who belongs to the St. Engenas Church, but in the Botswana branch. Their senior minister is also on, on the way to come here to also work with us. So, so we are working with them to, to try to compare notes. We are also working with the Border Management Authority. The one representative of Botswana, it's already here, to give us the list of those that cross from the, the bus. But it's just unfortunate that, you know, when you cross, you got your list and the other list remain. So the other list we might have perished with our bus, but the other list is remaining. So we must take all this list. Our police must down with that list as part of investigation and work with uh, Dr. Mama Shela here, the forensic, mm -hmm. and be able to come and tell you exactly what has happened. For now, what's going to happen? The nine, we can't repatriate them. Because even you here in South Africa, if I got involved in an accident, my parents or my family will not receive my remains immediately. We still need Yes, the cause of death might be accident, but the mere fact that it's unnatural death, it must go through post-mortem process. And the post-mortem must be able to confirm that uh, because an accident does not kill you, you can, you can be killed by multiple injuries or whatever it is. Mm. So that must be identified through the, the process. So for now, what is going to happen, working with the families represented by the two senior Varuti, which a high Commissioner has already explained that, you know what is an advantage is that they are also part of the senior police officials from the Botswana government. So already they, they are 
enlightened on this process. So we, that's why we are not uh, sidelining the families. And that's why the families are not even feeling sidelined because they know we are working with the relevant people. So we will be able to, to follow the process of positive identity, identifications of the nine, the, the positive. Remember, they are identifiable. After identifiable, we must go through the positive identification in terms of our language, where the family bring an ID, the person says, this is the person. Then after the positive identification, immediately we conduct post-mortem. After post-mortem, we then issue death certificate. Then we also issue, because now the repatriation process must start. We must now work, work at home at first. We must now issue a certificate license to say, this person did not die of COVID or any notifiable disease. This person died of accident. We are free to can release them to cross the border. You know, all those health uh, 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 indicators must be cleared before uh, that, that process uh, can happen. So I felt maybe I should go at length and explain uh, some, some of, of these uh, questions that you were asking. And, and uh, also, uh, you know with the bus, mm. the bus has been identified through South African police. Mm. Because what, what the police were, were reported also to the High Commissioner was to say, from the, uh, the, the registration number, they were able to trace the bus back to Botswana. They've communicated with the bus company owner. It will be unfair for us, and, and I, I hear and understand why the Commissioner being a judge, she would keep on not uh, mentioning that name, because it's, it will be unfair to now start to say Ramatuba bus company is involved. You know, it, it's really, this is a sensitive matter. Uh, and, and you also want to protect uh, everyone who is involved so that we avoid all that. The bus company is known, that's why we even have the list. That's why we, we're just saying we can't give you the list because the list is not verified. We can only do that after all this process, which by the way, that process is led by the police. The matter is still under investigations. Therefore, me and the High Commissioner cannot comment on some of these areas. We will be interfering with the police investigations. Uh, the other question was... The, no. No, it's, it's not. She's not a pastor. <laughs> Just to give you an example, yeah. uh, uh, the, the, the patient and, the, and the, her grandmother were not, were not pastors. So uh, I think he, the, the commissioner, what I understood they saying was that some of the uh, passengers were Barut. In Barut, yes. and, and she said it's a small village, for instance. They work together as a community where they agree on getting transport to go here. It was not only this bus, others were in the Kumbi. That's what we were saying, others will move from this and get into that. So they had agreed, and this is a planned trip to say, come Easter, we're going to pray, mm -hmm. and pray for me and you. Uh, so, so as they go there, they, there is that particular arrangement. And, and you will find that in the bus, there were also pastors. In the Kumbi, there were also at our route. It, it was not mainly pastors. Mm -hmm. There were women and, and children. But let's allow the process led by Dr. Mama Shen. It will tell us how many females were there, how many maids were there, how many children were there, how many adults were there, and we'll be able to come here and openly tell you. Uh, I must repeat, uh, because now I'm interpreting what the judge is saying. Now I understand why uh, we can't <laughs> interpret uh, the judge's judgment. Uh, she has indicated that even the process, we can't tell you now. We can't tell you, because if you have listened to when I was explaining to you how the identification process work from positive identifications of the ones you know, and then moving to the ones that you don't know, how we must bring Interpol. Because, uh, look, look, let me just give you a demonstration. You have got, for now, we have got 25 body bags there in our mochari, which we don't know 
who is in that, whether it's an individual in one body bag or it's multiple people or two body bags have got one, uh, it's one individual. We don't know that process. Now, to know that process, he must come with his team, Dr. Mamashev, dissect and know where to get the specimen. Take that specimen and then national DNA, the team that deals with DNA in forensic, they must work with Interpol and work with the Butuan, our Botswana counterpart, who are the families who are related to this one, the next of kin, where we are going to take specimen and do the comparison, that process. It's not one individual department. And, and I think it also answers the question as to what is the, the assistance from South African government. The fact of the matter is that the accident happens in South Africa of our Botswana uh, uh, brothers and sisters and children. Then the two governments will have to work together to assist each other this time around. We are assisting each other because an accident happened in our midst. We are not assisting the Botswana. We are also helping ourselves. The Botswana government is also helping themselves. So we need each other. As the president says, let's do more together. If we can do that together, we'll be able to help each other and lay our loved ones to rest. So, so working together, we will be able to fast track this process. It will not, we, for now, we can't tell you exactly when will it happen. Hence I said earlier on, let's, the first head that we must cross is to retrieve the, all the remains. You see, once we get the remains retrieved, then we will call you again with this team being much more bigger than here and say to you, we have been able to retrieve the remains. Now, this is the program of action, how we are going to do this, how our road accident fund can come into the picture, how home affairs comes into the picture, how DECO also uh, must be coming into the picture, how even National Department of Health must come to the picture, how border management authority come to the picture. We will tell you, we will be able to outline, but for now, it's me and her who has been delegated. She was delegated by Botswana government. I was delegated by our provincial government, here, the premier, and he was delegated by national uh, government. So the three of us are here just to reassure you that this, we are on top of this. And we know working together will be able to answer all your questions. Let me say, I promise this is the last question, at least from my side. I heard you saying the patient and the grandmother were not necessarily pastors. That gave me an idea that so far we know that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the child was traveling with the grandmother. And I'm trying to check whether the child is able to communicate with you, to talk, to give you perhaps some of the information that is helpful um, in that regard. And lastly, whether on the basis of what you already know, the number of uh, bodies that you have be able to account for, to determine whether there were more than one child in the bus. It, it's that, that the, the second question is difficult to answer whether there was there was more than a child one. A, 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 more than one a, but we will respond to that at the right time mm. the, the question that I can respond is that yes uh, the, the child is able to communicate with us the child was able to tell us her name and the child was able to tell us she was with her grandmother but the child uh, as I've said earlier on it's not able to, to, to talk about the accident. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should add that um, the child in her state, awake, was able to give her mother's two telephone mo mobile numbers from her head. That should demonstrate that uh, what the MEC is saying and what the doctors are saying. She's not a critical patient. We have seen her. Unfortunately, we couldn't talk to her because she had just left. Uh, the, the doctors had been performing a procedure and they made her sleep. 
but you look at her, you see a girl who is serene, brilliant young woman, beautiful young woman. And I should say that I'm so very proud of her. And uh, just a detail, God being who he is, the child was found on the road with her grandmother. They didn't roll with the bus. And this is what has helped us. And um, there was a question about whether we have contacted the ZCC. Not yet. But we have sent a message of condolences. You know, you don't want to be, contact, to be contacting the church when you have nothing to say to them. But after here, we, we, I, I have something if I'm able to, to communicate with them. Baruti, the, the question of Baruti MEC has uh, explained. In that bus, there were pastors, because all of them. I don't know whether you are familiar with this Moria. For us, for as long as I can remember, every Easter, buses and buses from Botswana bring um, the congregations. So it's a mixture. Of, uh, of church members, families, and what have you. But at this point in time, like uh, the MEC is saying, we, nobody can confirm whether there were families in there, at least from our point of view. Maybe the, or the organizers later will be able to tell us that uh, there were families. And another thing that is going to make a, a, a bit of a relief for the nine identifiable people. The gentlemen who are here, the pastors, the families who are, who are outside, they are going to the mortuary because now the first step is just visual identification. They know each other. In Botswana, we basically, each of us knows the, the next person, which will help the, in the doctors, the police, Interpol, at least for the nine. But we, are, we cannot say they will be living on such and such a date because that is the, only, the first step. A lot still has to be done by the, by the experts. Um, I, think, uh, I, think, I think that's all. But one thing, the child, please, I've seen some reports saying that uh, she's critically injured. Please be assured that she is fine. She is going to be fine. Thank you. Yes, this brings us to the end of this uh, media briefing. Thanks, colleagues.